All right, welcome back to another Touch Designer tutorial. And in this one, we're gonna look at how to create a texture with noise and feedback that we can then use to create particles with instancing. So the idea here is that we really just have a very simple noise and then feedback loop, and then some, some processing of that data. And we're using the uh, XYZ or RGB data to create or you know drive the positions and colors and these kind of things of particles in 3D space. So the original texture itself doesn't look very interesting or beautiful, but the 3D outcome is actually pretty cool. So uh, we also have a lot of options what we can do with this. So I'm just going to show a few. One thing is that we can, like you know, it makes a huge difference what we're basing the whole thing on. So basically what, what the starting point is. And then we can we can mess around with the slope here. So we can go up to like 40 and then 30, 30 here. You can see that looks quite different. Maybe not the best example now, but <laughs> there's many things we can do with that. We can add another noise here and that creates a lot more dynamics and turbulence. We can add transform here to only sort of show parts of the texture. We can uh, add a limit, which is basically like a bound in box. We can add blur and play around with that. So there's many, many things we can do to manipulate this. And I hope that compression pr compression doesn't kill this too much, but uh, it's going to look nice on your own computer. So um, we can technically go up to a thousand by a thousand on the texture, meaning we can technically have a million particles. But uh, right now when I'm like recording, it, it, it doesn't like that. So I went down to 600, 640,000. All right, so as always, I'm gonna delete everything and let's get started. Cool, so we're gonna start with a noise as we so often do. And I'm gonna, as I said, change the resolution here to 800 by 800. Let's change the pixel format to 32-bit float RGB. And let's change a few things about the noise itself. I'm going to change the period to free and go down with all of these. I'm going to turn monochrome off. We definitely want this to be colors. We also want to go down with the offset. All right, so your texture should look something like this. We're going to change the seed in a second. So I'm going to add a feedback top and a keyboard in chop. To this keyboard in, I'm going to add a count as well as a now. And I'm going to use my channel here on the seed. So that's one thing. And I'm going to use this channel on my pulse. So every time I press one, it's going to have like my noise is going to have a different seed and my feedback is going to reset. Before I actually go on with this, I want to set up the 3D scene and show you what's happening here. So I'm going to add a null to this and call it pause for position. Then I'm going to add a an add sop. And I'm going to add a point here, add a convert sop after that, and change convert to particles per point and particle type to render as point sprites. And then add a geo from here, geometry comp. I'm going to add a camera. We don't need a light, but I am going to add two nulls so just one and copy it. And I'm going to call one of them CT for constraint to and the other one LA for look at. And I'm going to drag them on the corresponding parameters of the camera. So the camera is now looking at this point and with the constraint to we're nicely in control of how it rotates and translates and stuff. All right. So then I'm going to add a render top. And I want my resolution to be 1280 by 1280. So square resolution. And I'm going to add a line mat here. I'm going to drag it on here, par material. Let's turn off all of these viewers. There we go. And uh, let's go to our line mat and turn off draw lines. And instead, turn on draw points. I'm going to go down with my point size multiplier to 0.15 and change my point near color to white and the point far color also to white. Then I'm going to add a null to this, call it BG, and display that. I have turned off um, backdrop tops, 
and I have split my screen here and selected top viewer so I see whatever is in here on the left. Cool. So right now we don't really see anything. Like if we go up with our point size multiplier, we can see we have one dot, this one point we added in the center. And uh, I've just turned down the size so we don't really see it anymore. Um, on my geo now, I want to turn on instancing and I want to use this as my translate OP. For X, Y, Z, I'm now going to select R, G, and B. So uh, basically what we're doing here, we have three different channels, right? Every color channel can now drive the position of each point. So for each pixel, we have a particle and each pixel has three values, three color values. And so every pixel or then every point has some position in space. So that's basically what we're doing here. So what we could do, we could go to our noise and type in abs time dot uh, seconds times 0.5 or something and then we have this animated. I'm gonna zoom in a bit closer, to maybe free. It's already looking kind of interesting but I guess a lot of you have already seen this, it's not super interesting but the idea here is to to manipulate this texture now, right? We have a noise texture and now we can go on further with this and manipulate it. So I'm gonna actually break the connection here, move this a bit up and um, I'm going to add a displace to this as well as a slope. So the feedback loop itself is nothing new. It's something that we've been working on for with some other tutorials. But uh, the way we're using it is different. So let's go down for our displace weight on both axes to 0 0.05. And on our slope, I'm going to go up with the strength to, strength to 4 and drag my, feed, my displace back onto the feedback. And then I'm going to connect this to the position. So if I press 1 now, you can already see this. it looks kind of interesting, like it's sort of tearing apart, right? Because what's happening here is that it's kind of growing, which is totally not a good explanation of why this is tearing apart. But yeah, <laughs> it's happening nonetheless. All right. Well, it's getting, kind of getting brighter here as well slowly or like uh, becoming like one color it's all like mixing up in a way so as you can see the the variety of color gets less and if the variety of color gets less it like the position like the, the positions of all the different points become more of the same so they move closer together i think that's a better explanation of what's happening here so uh quite obviously this is not what we're going for so First off, let's add a noise from our feedback middle mouse. And on my noise here, I just wanted this to be noise, not combined with the input. And then on my noise here, I'm gonna go <coughs> down with the amplitude to point zero 0.01. I don't want this to be monochrome, and I don't want any harmonics. I'm gonna go up with my period to two, and I'm gonna animate this in a second. So first off, I'm gonna add a composite here. And then just to be clean, I'm going to put this in here and then uh, change the order. Sometimes there's a bug. Just just uh, cut it out and paste it again. And I'm, on my operation, I definitely don't want this to be multiply, as you can see, because that's just going to make it disappear. So I'm going to change this to linear light. And <clears throat> I also have to swap my operation order here. So that's already looking better, right? Slow, slowly getting to the point of what I showed you in the beginning. So before we move on and tackle this kind of problem that we have here that it's sort of infinitely growing, I'm going to add some color so it looks better and we can also see things a bit better. So I'm going to add another noise here. Again, I just want to have the noise and not combine with the input. And I'm going to change my period to 6, harmonics 1, offset point. Uh, three five and not monochrome. I'm gonna add a null again and call this color. And then on my instancing, I'm gonna go to my instance two page and use this as a color op and just type in R G B. Okay, 
So if I press one again, we're resetting the feedback so we can see what's happening here. Before the BG null here, I definitely want to add a transform. Turn this alpha to one, comp over background color on so we can see things a bit better. I might also want to make things a bit brighter by adding a level here, changing the brightness to 1.5, contrast maybe to 1.1. All right, that's looking better. So we still have the problem that things are just getting sort of brighter and brighter. And by, you know, getting brighter and brighter, it's kind of growing and growing or like they're, you know, the f in the beginning we had the problem that they're all becoming the same color. And now it's just becoming brighter. So they're like moving in all kinds of direction further f away from each other. So to tackle that problem, we can use a level and simply like we could also go down with the brightness. I'm simply going to go down with the opacity to 0.99. And now you can see it's sort of the acceleration or the growing is sort of limited or there's always a counter force that is keeping it, keeping it, it that is keeping it in place, right? So that's kind of interesting, but it seems like it's sort of stuck in one loop here and that's because our noise is not moving. So what I'm going to do here is again type abs time dot seconds and then times 0 0.05. And now you can see it's nicely moving and looks quite interesting. That is really the main main technique. And there's now a lot of things that we can do to make it more interesting or to have some more control. So first off, we can look at our starting noise, our initial texture here. And uh, we could go, go down with the period. Like this is only gonna affect our loop once we reset it, because it's what it's based on, but it's not being integrated in the feedback loop again. So if I press one now, you can see it looks quite different. You could even just uh, like this technically wouldn't even have to be like a, a noise, I guess could be anything, but a noise just makes kind of most, most sense. Um, so yeah, you can play around with that. It's going to affect how it looks. Then we have this noise too here. And we can also, again, like change the period to, to something else and that's gonna keep affecting it, right? Because, because this noise is in the loop. We could also technically make it stronger, but um, you might see why I didn't do that. We could also add um, the feedback here again in the second input. Kind of looks like curl noise, but then um, we have the problem that it's sort of disappearing after a while but for the for the beginning it looks very cool we might find a way here to to counter that again but that's also interesting then we can change the slope here so first off we can go up with the strength so the higher the strength and or the more of a difference we have between the strength and the sample step the more sort of noisy it's, it gets if we have the same strength as the sample step you can now see it it's like it's more of these kind of chunky things <laughs> if that makes sense, it looks more steppy. We can now go further up with this, or uh, you know, we can also have a sample step that varies in itself. We can also have a like a lower strength and a higher sample step, but I think that makes it actually less interesting. It just looks more like regular instant no instanced noise. So for me, I, I like to to work with like five and one and one, but really feel free to mess around with this quite a bit. Then we could also add a blur in here. And if we just add the blur as is, it's going to do kind of a similar thing to what happened here when we went further up with the sample step than the strength. It's just kind of evening things out. So if we go up higher, it's just going to look boring. Very cool. One very cool thing here is the dither feature. If we turn this on, um, like you, you can't see it that well now. Why can I not see it well now? What the hell? <laughs> but um, it's yeah, it's a bit hard to see. I guess even with uh, this depression, I wanted to say <laughs> with uh, compression, it's probably even uh, even worse. But yeah, try try out this dithering function feature, whatever. And if you go down with this sample step. You can 
I think, see it even better. And then just mess around with the filter size. So that that that's kind of interesting. We could also just copy and 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 paste this and then put it after the loop. That's gonna look a bit different. Again, you can mess around the way it looks. It's kind of flickery like this. Why can I not see the dithering now? What the hell? <laughs> well, anyways, it, it usually makes a difference. Um, I'm gonna turn it off now. So. There's a few more things we can add in here. Obviously, you could add anything in a loop. Just be creative here. You could also add a, just, you know, on talking about blurs, we could also add a luma blur in combination with another monochromatic noise. So we have the blur only partially. That's also interesting. Let's uh, add another noise here. Let's move this over here. And on my noise here, I am going to change a few things. So first off, we want to change this to, no, this is okay the way it is. Let's go down with the offset. Let's go down with the amplitude point uh, 0.25. Definitely not monochromatic. We can go down with all of the harmonics and then we can animate this as well. So ABS time dot seconds times 0.2. And uh, now you can see if we bypass it, Let's uh, let's maybe go up with our period here. Maybe let's go down with the animation. So we can really see the difference well, right? Like it just adds more dynamics depending on the period size. So if we go down, it's like almost looks like, I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> Wanted to say cloth, but it doesn't really look like cloth. But yeah, I think at some point it doesn't actually make that much of a difference anymore. But I think like, you know, period of two or one is a really nice addition to the feedback loop it just adds more dynamics and and movement all right so that, that looks sick um, another thing that we can do here is to add a transform and basically right now the entire texture is represented in 3d space but we could just make the texture bigger which in, just means that we're showing parts of it. That's already interesting, right? It's already quite different. And now what we could do is we could change this to either repeat or mirror, and then we could change, like we could add animation here as well. So ABS time dot seconds times, fuck, <laughs> times by two. I want it to be very quick, it didn't work. Um, <laughs> so now you can see it's kind of moving through this texture here. We can see it here. And the outcome just looks very interesting because we have this sort of unpredictable uh, outcome. Like right now, it doesn't actually look that great. You could even add some blur after that. Yeah, so the combination of these different things really makes a different of, difference, of course. So you could also add the noise after the transform. That's also going to change the way it behaves and looks. Another thing is adding a limit here. And on my limit, I have a few options what, what I can do. So first off, we could just clamp it. And that's basically going to create a bounding box. So if any particle goes above uh, the position of one or minus one, or like, you know, below, below, below minus one, uh, it's just going to be sort of clamped there. It's just going to be stuck there, um, as you can see here. I think more interesting, though, is using loop or zigzag so for loop is like when it hits the wall here for example it's just going to loop back and start here so basically when it hits one it's going to hit like it's going to go back to minus one so this is quite interesting also adds more dynamics it doesn't take anything away i also really like zigzag so for zigzag the thing is like once a particle reaches the end it's just sort of going to bounce back so if it reaches one it's gonna you know goes up to one and then it goes down from one again so this looks uh, even better if you like, you know, change the camera a bit and maybe go uh, zoom out a bit and then like you can rotate it maybe 45 here, 45 here. Yeah, you can't see it that well. You could also add a box, you know, an actual box with like a wireframe or something like that, that actually represents that bounding box or the uh, limitation. So yeah, um, while we add it, Let's have a quick look at the camera. So um, 
Yeah, as I, as I just showed, you can rotate it around and you can even animate that as well. Uh, maybe it's time dot frame times 0.5. And then it's just going to rotate the entire thing. Like all of the particles, they're going to rotate around the Y axis or whatever axis you want. So if I put on two here, you can see it better. It looks really cool as well. Um, further for the limitation here, we can turn this off again. And then we could technically also quantize it. Um, it doesn't look that great, though. <laughs> I'm still showing it to you. Um, Technically, like I, I had found a way, like in, in some other experiment, it looked better. I don't know why you can barely see it now. But if you go up of the particle size and then the value step, you can kind of see it. It can be cool at like low, low values, maybe 0.25. But um, yeah, I think the original looks way better. Okay, so as I said, several times probably now, <laughs> you can you can add and add anything and play around here, but we can also add some more post processing. So let's have a look at that. So between my level and transform here is a good place to put some some effects. So one of those would be bloom. So I can go to image filters and then use my bloom, put that in here, select it to the first input, put that in here. First, it doesn't look that great. We, we've got to go down of the intensity to like 0.5 and the threshold to point like 0 0.05. It's a bit laggy right now, but it usually isn't. So I think, you know, it really adds something to this. You can go up of the bloom level, you can go up of the glow level. You could change the color or uh, the intensity, but I wouldn't go high, too high with the intensity. At some point, it just looks strange, blurred out. But yeah, I think it's a it's a good uh, project to use Bloom on if you don't go too crazy with it. And then the other thing is, of course, we can just add feedback. So there we go. So I can just add, I just prepared this feedback loop. I can add that in here, um, press 1 to reset it. And then if I change it to like 0.7 maybe, it just adds a bit more like smoothness. We might also want to change these around. So like the, the Bloom isn't integrated in the feedback. But yeah. I'm going to leave it up to you to mess around with that. You could also add like a Luma Blur to add some some depth of field, these kind of things, composite stuff, all of that. I'm not going to repeat myself by saying you can play around with this now. I think you've, I think you've gotten that. <laughs> um, anyways, I, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I just want to express my deep gratitude to all of my patrons that are supporting me and making this possible. So thank you. Thank you. If you also want to get some extra content or just support me, you can become a Patreon. There's a link in the description. So thank you. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.